Hey golfers and welcome back to the Second Swing Thoughts podcast. It is episode 37 and for today we're going to go back actually to a YouTube live stream we did about a week ago on the channel. We had a Titleist wedge fitter, John Habegger, join us to talk all about the SM10 wedges, everything from the technology and to the new bounce and grind options and also he gave us some fitting insight as well so that uh, you can have all the information that you need on SM10 wedges to put them in the bag and improve your short game. So um, you can go back to our YouTube channel and watch this live stream if you'd like to. Um, or, of course, you can tune in here to the podcast. We have the whole audio about to play here in a second. So stay tuned for John Habegger. Wonderful day in golf for many reasons. Uh Number one reason being today is the sort of the full in-stock launch day for Titleist Vokey SM10 wedges. A really exciting day for us at Second Swing. Um, kind of the, you know, the number one wedge in golf year after year. Um, and there's another series this year at the SM10. So our fitters um, at Second Swing are very excited about that. And uh, today we have another fitter with us uh, from Titleist that's also very excited about it. So um, I want to welcome in John. Uh, is it Habiger? I got to make sure I pronounce that right first and make sure that um, you're also introducing yourself first. Why don't you actually introduce yourself to the viewers and that way I know how to pronounce your name, John. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, I'm John Habiger. I'm the uh, Vokey okay. Fitting Specialist, um, primarily for the East Coast. Um, but yeah, excited to be here. Excited for uh, the official launch finally of, of uh, SM10. Yeah, it's uh, as I've mentioned, we're always very excited about the Vokey wedges for for many reasons. Obviously, there's you know a ton of performance packed in there. Uh, the you know the spin, the control around the greens. Um, but then uh, it's also about the loft and grind options that we'll get into as well that make the fitters' lives here at Second Swing so easy. And obviously, for you as well as a fitter, you know how um, that helps in your job as well. So um, can you kind of just give a background for us a little bit of, of maybe your experience in golf and kind of what you do for Titleist? Sure, absolutely. So yeah, I've been in the uh, golf equipment business um, fitting specifically in club building for, for a long time. Started in uh, 2006, um, was with a different manufacturer for a while and then went to work for <clears throat> Titleist in my current role. Um, this is the start of year seven. So it's, uh, it's flown by. Um, but basically my kind of day-to-day -day, uh, with regards to fitting and, and whatnot is, is working directly with consumers um, at different uh, green grass facilities for the most part um, uh, across primarily Southeast United States, uh, Georgia, Florida, Carolina. That's, that's where I spend a lot of time. I live in Georgia. So, um, but yeah, just uh, fitting, uh, fitting wedges. We're, we're, uh, Trying to just fit everybody, you know, one golfer at a time, just like you guys are. Uh, the importance of wedge fitting, it's uh, it's it's not where we want it yet. <laughs> it's, a, it's a growing demographic that we're trying to get better. Um, like I said, one golfer at a time. Yeah, exactly. I think there's uh, there's certainly a, a further emphasis on fitting that's been placed um, in golf in the last, uh, I would say, five to ten years. It's kind of seen the really the popularity of club fitting. And so I, I, th I feel like wedges are kind of that maybe that one – you know, section of the bag that um, is, I don't want to say lagging behind, but I think there's a, a more emphasis that could be put on it for golfers. And so uh, I know the the Vokey wedges do a great job of giving all those options. So um, let's just kind of dive right into the SM10 wedges, some of the technology there. And I'll also remind the viewers that are joining here, um, if you have a question or a comment or a thought, um, please leave it in the chat and um, we'll get to that here towards the end if we have time. Um, I know John does have to run here towards the end, so we'll we'll make sure we're gonna, we're, we're doing this in a timely manner. So um, the technology SM10 wedges, um, we, we've, read a lot about it we've done some testing here as well but one of the things that i find really unique is the progressive center of gravity that's um that's kind of involved throughout the loss throughout the grind so talk to me about what really that is and maybe someone that's watching doesn't quite understand what that means but uh could you explain what that is and what advantages it gives to the golfer sure um so with regards to progressive center of gravity um we're, we're kind of talking about where that that's going to help give precise distance and trajectory control um, there's kind of really two lines of, of the CG axis, if you will, um, where we've got kind of up and down and then, and then vertically across it as well as forward. So technically three, I guess. And, um, when we're talking about progressive center of gravity in our pitching wedge and gap wedges, the center of gravity 
is going to be a little bit lower uh, in the club. That's going to give a little bit more speed and, and kind of hit those windows that we're looking for, um, kind of transition from the irons into the wedges, like in your pitching wedge and gap wedge. And then as we work our way into the sand and then lob wedge, that CG is raised higher and actually more forward in SM10, which is going to produce a lower uh, spinnier ball flight, as well as dynamically kind of help make the club square a little bit more. So for, you know, consumers out there that maybe have played our wedges in the past, starting with, you know, say the eights, nines, now into the tens, um, we've, we've kind of got the best of everything in there. Uh, that high, more forward CG, which is really taking what we had at eights, nines, and kind of combined it together to give you, to give you all that benefit. Yeah, it's interesting because you 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 think of wedges, you don't really think of trying in many ways to lower ball flight effect because, you know, wedges are the highest kind of lofted clubs that are in the bag. And so I think so many people think of, I got to get that ball up. I got to get all this spin on it, get a fly high through the air. But um, obviously, as, as you're, you know, uh, and to your point, a lower trajectory is a lot more controlled as well. It gives a lot more control to the golfer. So that's kind of the 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 aim at least for those higher lofted wedges is sort of to bring it down and also provide more control right that's exactly right so a good thing i'll kind of talk with with a player with is have they ever been to a to a tour event for example right those guys mm -hmm. want to hit their drivers really high right with very little spin and with the wedge it's kind of the opposite we want to bring that ball flight down with a lot of spin because that gives them more control over the golf ball so what we're looking at, and this is a kind of a good way I tell fitters and stuff to remember um, a good way, like what is, if you have access obviously to a, to a launch monitor, like a track man or something like that, where you can really see like, what is a good kind of launch number, so to speak with wedges. So you take the loft of the wedge and divide it by two, right. And then subtract two. And that's, that's really what we're looking for with, with our tour players. So, um, you know, if we can get close to that with a, with a consumer of fitting, that's, that's a really good number. So kind of will live basically sub 30 degrees launch, uh, in, in mm. the loft of, uh, in your highest loft of wedges. Interesting. Yeah. That's kind of a good little formula, I guess, for, for the fitters that I know, um, I know our fitters in, in the, in the bays will appreciate that as well. Um, another obviously aspect of wedges, of course, is the spin and, you know, sometimes there's, it, it's, it's not necessarily about maximizing all the spin you could possibly get, but it's also controlling it as well. Um, and tireless through the years with the Vokey wedges, there's been, you know, spin mill. I remember when that was first kind of introduced on the wedges way back in the day. It sounds like that's been refined over the years. And now we've got kind of a, a, a newer updated process for milling and cutting those grooves. So can you talk a little bit about uh, the latest process for the SM tens on uh, creating the grooves on the wedges? Absolutely. So uh, still uh, using our patented spin mill grooves that, that we've been using, but we've refined them now. Um, this is uh, kind of the, the gold standard of, of, our group, of our groove cutting process and the, our TX9 grooves that we have in SM10. Um, so the big thing about that is there's um, the way we cut it in the past was at a kind of a 15 degree uh, upper angle on the edge of the groove radius, which now is at zero. So that's quite different. Um, as well as uh, kind of the parallel texture that we have in between the grooves. It kind of helps with spin more on those partial shots. Um, and then still kind of individually cut the grooves based off, um, based off the loft and the finish of each wedge. So another question I, I get a, uh, quite a bit is, hey, does your raw finish, for example, spin more than, say, your Tor Chrome or, or your Jet Black finish? And the answer is no, because the way we cut them, they're all going to spin the same regardless of the finish. And I think that's a kind of a common misconception with us. Yeah. I think I've also kind of, you know, I, I definitely have been, um, you know, made aware, I guess, of that, that thought, that sort of perception is that the raw finish, you know, because of the way it finishes and it, you know, rusts and stuff that it, it's going to spin more. Uh, but you know, that's, I guess what you're saying is no matter what the finish is, the way that the grooves are cut, it's designed to kind of just spin the same throughout, um, which is really good to know because, uh, actually, it's funny because I, I have wedges of my own here, and I we'll talk about that nickel finish later, which looks sweet. But uh, I like I may be different in that I like had to have different finishes through my wedge set. Uh, but if someone is interested in say one um, or multiple finishes, it's good to know that the spin performance anyway won't necessarily be affected by by that. So uh, speaking of kind of the the, the grooves and the, and the look, I also wanted to, to bring up this heat treatment process. Uh, because I think one of the things that golfers are 
curious about maybe or maybe concerned about when when getting wedges is how long they're going to last and so the this kind of piece you guys do for maintaining the durability of the wedges i think is very important for golfers yeah so we do a heat uh, uh treatment process to the impact area of the wedge and what that does is it actually doubles the life of the groove so instead of say uh, about 400 bunker shots by doing this process it doubles it to 800 bunker shots and and that's pretty important because wedges do wear, right? Um, after about 75 rounds, we've seen we start to get a little bit of what we call spin decay. Um, I, I kind of tell consumers after about 125 rounds, you're starting to see really significant difference in performance where the ball may slide up the face more, launch higher, come up shorter, uh, so you don't hit your carry distances as, as uh, consistently. And as well as, you know, especially out of the rough and stuff like that, you're not going to mm -hmm. get near as much spin. You're not going to have near as much control over the golf ball. Right. Yeah. I think that's a very important piece that I, I know we've always tried to, you know, inform golfers when they kind of, you know, we see some trade-ins of the wedges, right. And they're, you know, pretty worn on the face and it's like, you're going to see some pretty big differences on these next wedges that you upgrade to. Uh, so a lot of these players that might be upgrading to SM10 right now today, or in the next few weeks here when they could fit, um, <laughs> they're going to see some pretty big differences with new grooves there for sure. So, uh, and then we also got to go over these grinds. Uh, so that's, I think my favorite part about Vokey, uh, wedges is just the, the, the wide variation of lofts and grinds that you're able to work with. So, uh, I kind of want to just run through the lineup first, but I guess, can you just give us a little bit of insight on, on really the importance of loft and grind and making sure it fits a player's swing and also kind of maybe at like, like what if someone's playing the wrong loft or wrong bounce or grind for their, like, what are they missing out on? Yeah, that, well, that's that's a great point. So all, all this cool stuff we're talking about, about the technology of SM10, like the the new progressive center of gravity and these great grooves we got, unless you get the right grind to get that impact location on the correct place on the face, which is really kind of between grooves two and five, we're not going to get all the benefit of all these things. So it really starts with the grind. Um, it, it's, it's so very important. And this is where the fitting aspect really comes into play while we encourage everybody to go out and get fit. Um, and we, you know, obviously there's, several different ways to be fit for them. But um, really the, the uh, with SM10, this is our most extensive line uh, grind lineup that we've had. There's 25 different um, uh, SKUs out there now. Um, mm -hmm. A couple that we've brought back, I guess, since, uh, since SM9 and before, uh, one fan favorite that uh, was missing was the 5408M uh, grind. And one reason we brought that back was as you know, the way uh, iron lofts have kind of gone, 54 may be yep. the highest loft a player may play, right? Um, also, um, just on tour, uh, all of our all of our feedback comes directly from the best players in the world. That's that's Bob Bokey's R&D department always has been. So we, we take that feedback from them, and, and what's working out there generally is going to help other people as well, right? So that 54M... You know, it was it was a very popular skew out there, and, and the fifty fours and, and fifty sixes. It's it's um, the F, the M, and the S uh, kind of split almost equally. And then mm -hmm. uh, last year we added a uh, line extension for the T grind and the sixty. We now have that as well as in a fifty eight model as well. And again, that kind of comes directly from from the tour with the T grind and the M grind being the two most popular grinds offered in a lob wedge. Yeah, yeah, that's it's fascinating to see. Because I've kind of gotten up up close look at sort of the different grinds and and how they're shaped, and you know you can, it's one thing to kind of hear the discussion of sort of why you know why a, a T grind is going to play differently than obviously like you know this is a very extreme example, but say a K grind, you know the, <laughs> then you see the builds right. of them up close and it's just wildly different. Um, and so, is there a like you know this might be a, a, an odd question, but I, as a fitter maybe you'll have some insight into this is is there a, a grind or grinds that might be more popular to sort of the quote unquote average golfers out there? Or maybe one of the grinds is kind of reserved maybe for very unique swings out there. That's a fair question. Um, the, the best way I can answer that first and foremost is you got to get fit, right? Because mm -hmm. everybody's different. It's not one grind fits all or anything like that. That's why we have so many of them. And, um, it depends, I think, a lot, first and foremost, on that player's swing, right? Are they a little steeper? Are they a little more um, shallow through it, right? All these different things. And then on the conditions on which they play. So what I've found is, you know, there's sometimes regional parts of the world can be a little bit different, right? Like it's maybe a little bit 
firmer in this part of the world versus here it's a little bit softer and grainier grabbier type grasses so i think that really comes into play as well um but again that's why it's so important to get fit and kind of work with somebody on that to answer your question you know like a t grind for example yeah it's the most played grind in a lob wedge on tour because those guys are really good at using the balance of the wedge mm-hmm. and how, how to deliver the, the club. Right. And they need that versatility at their level because of the conditions on which they're playing week in and week out. So that's why there's a lot of the best players in the world playing that particular grind. Right. But that doesn't mean that it's, it's um, not for somebody else. Right. Again, that's, that's the whole point of, of kind of being fit. And that's why we have so many different ones of them. Yeah. It's also probably, I imagine, you know, as we kind of dive into sort of, some more of these fitting dynamics of it. Um, I've always, you know, one of the, you know, the, the fitters here at Second Swing, one of the things he always preaches quite a bit is having multiple different lofts, grinds, bounces, even um, in your wedges or, or throughout your wedge set. And so um, now I, I maybe that's not exactly perfect for every golfer, but um, I guess what maybe is there a ratio of golfers that say fit into multiple grinds and bounces versus all the same? Or I guess what's that dynamic that, you and then in the conversation you have with golfers when they're looking to you know they're upgrading to an sm10 set of wedges and you know you're discussing the loft and grinds and, and and bounces with them uh to mix those grinds up a little bit in the bag talking about that all the time and every mm-hmm. single fitting we do so again fit to the player swing first obviously condition second but having that conversation of versatility in the bag is so important um we get 14 clubs, right, that we can play with. Well, some of them are pretty one-dimensional. So having as versatile as possible in the wedge setup is is key to playing great golf. So um, not always, but more often than not, uh, you're going to have a player that maybe has a little uh, kind of mid to high bounce uh, grind, say, in their sand wedge, for example, and then the opposite, right, maybe a mid to low bounce option in their lob wedge to give that versatility because you're going to have situations where in, in a round of golf on any golf course that you're going to get a – you know, soft, spongy, grainy, mm-hmm. grabby lie where a little bit more bounce and less loft can be beneficial there. And then vice versa, you're going to get that kind of real tight, uh, firm uh, green side lie or, or more of a hard pan type bunker situation, wh- whatever the case may be. So having another wedge in the bag that's going to help with that. So not only having getting those different grinds in, in players' bags to give versatility, but as well as talking about the importance of wedge selection with that player once they get these, is uh is going to really help them score better yeah yeah exactly i i uh i'm glad you're you're you know promoting the different grinds throughout the bag um because i know that's been um obviously i as i mentioned before the fitters here at second swing are really promoting that hard and um i also now kind of want to i want to get your perspective on my wedge setup okay so I sure. just recently got my SM10 wedges. Um, I love them. I I actually changed primarily. I had SM9s last year, but I changed primarily because I got a new set of irons that's weak or lofted. And so instead of the 50, 54, 58 gapping setup, I'm not 52, 56, 60. Um, and so I figured, well, I'll just get upgrade to the SM10s. And so I got uh, the F grind for the 52. I've got the S grind for the 56 and the 60 is an M. So uh, now based on that, I guess, maybe do, what would you say a little bit like about my wedge game just by hearing those grinds? What would you, I guess, and is there any assumptions you could make about how I, how I use my wedges? First and foremost, that's a great set makeup, right? You got three different grinds in the bag. So well, let's get that out of the way. I love that. Um, I love that. I would say based off those, uh, probably one of two things, either you play somewhere that is a little bit, tighter and and firmer type conditions and that you're probably more neutral or just shallow um in your in your club delivery um would be my guess and uh i would say if i'm guessing your m is probably in your lob wedge Mm -hmm. probably like to manipulate the club face green side quite a bit open it up and and hit different shots like that which is going to give you ultimate versatility there so that makes a lot of sense and um, I would think your 52 is you're probably based off the, that you're probably just using it for full swing or partial swing shots for the most part there. And, uh, and the S probably somewhere in between, right? A little bit of uh, versatility that you may use green side, but you're probably using it some for, for kind of full and partial shots and stuff like that. So how, how'd I do based off that? That's uh, that's pretty darn good. Uh, it's uh, you know, it's, 
you are you are a Volky wedge fitter after all, so it's not like I was expecting you to be incorrect about that. But uh, no, it's <laughs> I I am the classic golfer, and and I, I this may or not, may not be be right, um, but you know I'm the classic golfer that anything inside of like 90 yards I'm using it's a nice 60 degree if I can, uh, and so that requires you know I'm I'm open in the face a lot. I'm I'm you know and of course I try to especially around here right now in Minnesota. Uh, a lot of times it is pretty soft, but right now we got a lot of courses that might be still frozen a little bit underneath. And I'm trying to get out there as much as I can to play. And so that's where the 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 low bounce sort of versatility of the M grind really works. Um, but that's the the interesting part about playing up here is the, the turf conditions can change so much, um, which is kind of, I guess, another reason to your point about having multiple grinds in the bag uh, because, you know, it, it might be firm and it's still kind of frozen underneath right now. And then in a couple months, it's going to be soft. And then uh, as throughout the summer, obviously it might, we might have a, a dry spell, might get firm. Uh, so that's kind of the, the advantage, especially up here in Minnesota of having multiple grinds in the bag. Uh, is there, is there any crazy setups that you've seen or fit players for? Um, I, I, because of all the options, I'm just curious about this. Like, is there, is there a, a setup that you can think of that kind of wowed you that's maybe a one of one that you might not ever fit somebody for again, but just because of their launch characteristics, the way they use wedges, that player called for it? Well, yeah, that, of course. There's there's crazy things that happen uh during the fitting process, which is what makes it so fun, right? If it was if it was just as easy as reading a piece of paper, then then you know everybody'd do it. But there's a lot right. more to that, especially you know, when you go through the fitting process, as you know. Um, to the point you were kind of saying earlier, I, I want to add in there, you know, your swing travels, right? So your, your deliveries into the club, you're, you know, more from the inside or, or steeper over the top type delivery that, that for the most part, that's, that is what it is. However, it's not uncommon for players to <clears throat> maybe change their lob wedge at different times of the year based off conditions, mm -hmm. right? To your point right now, it's a little firmer type you know, condition. So you're using a little bit, maybe a little bit less balance in your lob wedge, but then as, as it softens up, maybe you need to go to a little bit more. Uh, we see that on tour uh, when, when players kind of go to different places and I see it all the time. I, I do it myself. Um, I, I use one grind kind of um, this time of year in, in Georgia. And then as it, it kind of um, late summer into fall where it gets a little bit firmer and stuff like that, I, I typically switch to, to a different type of lob wedge. So um Especially if you if you travel a lot too, if if you've got a consumer that says, "Hey, look, I, I play a lot here, but in in this part of the year, I, I go over here," then maybe having um, that conversation say, "Hey, this is good for this this golf course where you're playing mm -hmm. a lot of your golf now, but if you go to this place, it's completely different. It's completely different type of grass or or uh, different type of conditions, etc." So it's okay to have something else, having more kind of weapons in the toolbox, if you will, to change out uh, throughout the course of the year. Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's that's a good point, actually, because there's also a large demographic that we work with that also is like you mentioned. I mean, the traveling there's they're they're up here in, in say Minnesota or the north part of the country for you know a certain part of the year, and then they like to travel down south somewhere for the other part of the year, so they can kind of stay in the sun most of the the calendar year. And uh, to your point, that's where having multiple grinds and maybe a, a separate lob wedge for the different conditions can be um, a big advantage. Um, all right, I wanted to move into the idea of uh, the different finishes. We mentioned it earlier, the different finishes that are available with the SM10 wedges. So there's uh, the Tour Chrome, there is the Jet Black, there's the Nickel, and then also the Raw Finish. And so the Nickel one, I, I believe, unless correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the Nickel one's pretty new and I think new to SM10. So uh, do you have any, like a, like, a backstory of how that one came about and, I guess, you know, where that came from? Because... That one to me, I have it in my 60 here, and um, I I love the way that one looks. Yeah, so uh, to your point earlier about um, having different colors in your different wedges, that, that's more common than you think. Uh, a lot of players really? just to say, hey, I like the the black in a lob wedge. I like the uh, now the nickel in the in the sand wedge, and then uh, and then my um, gap wedge, I'll I'll play tour chrome. It's it's just easier to see it in the bag for some players, right? So that's really not that crazy as you think. Um, I do have a great story though, to your point there about, uh, how that came Perfect. about. I'll give a shout out to, uh, yeah, I'll give a shout out to, uh, to my, uh, my boss, uh, Corey Gerard, who's our, our Vokey director. And, uh, he was, he was literally sitting in his, uh, office. I think as the story goes in Carlsbad and he saw 
three cars in the parking lot. They were all kind of parked next to each other. And one was black, one, one was silver. And then there was one kind of right there in the middle that was kind of like more of like a grayish type color. And he's like, that's it. So that's really where wow. it came from, as simple as that. It's like, hey, we need something a little bit more dead in the middle um, yeah. from the tour chrome to extremely to the black. So that's where nickel came from. I, I think it's great. Uh, I've been fitting um, in Florida for the last um, few weeks for the most part, and it's been a pretty popular choice down there, obviously, because it's so sunny. Um, sometimes the black can be a little extreme for, for players, right? They either love it or like, that's not for me and that's okay. So we wanted to give them another kind of darker option with a little, maybe less glare and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, the nickel has been really well received. Um, and then tour chrome still extremely popular, probably the most popular one. I, I like how it's really, we, we kind of made it a little bit more satiny type finish, if you will. It's not quite as shiny as, as, as chrome mm -hmm. as it used to be. Um, and then uh, the black is is, is beautiful. If, if you like that kind of just, um, you know, that real sleek kind of dark, you know, look to it is, is great. And then obviously raw, which is, uh, which I, I prefer. Um, I, I just think it looks neat. I like the rusty look. I love it when people say, okay. um, wow, how old are these wedges? No, they're actually... <laughs> <laughs> pretty actually new. Brand new. <laughs> right. Yeah. I, is there a, is there a breakdown of, you know, like the, you know, maybe a percentage point of, you know, how often players prefer say tour Chrome, uh, jet black, the nickel and raw, like is, is one is tour. I, I, I guess my assumption is that tour Chrome is the most popular, but maybe that, maybe that's wrong. I don't know. It, it is. It is the most popular. Um, I, so I don't have the exact statistic across, you know, all right, the yeah. millions of wedges that we sell worldwide. But I can tell you just from, uh, gosh, over the last six years of, of my fittings and stuff like that, I do have a breakdown of all that stuff. And it's about 50 percent Tour Chrome. Um, okay. And then in the past, when we had the brushed steel finish now replaced by nickel um, and jet black, they were about evenly split. Um and then, and then obviously Rawls a little bit less there for sure. But um, I would say nickel, this is a complete guess. I don't have any factual information behind this, yeah. but I, I think nickel is going to probably move the needle uh, a little bit yeah. more towards Tor Chrome. But I think Tor Chrome is it's your traditional type finish. It's still, it's still probably always going to be the most popular. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, again, I, I'm holding the the nickel finish right here. Um, I, I, I love it. I think I'm almost kind of regretting getting one one nickel and, and then uh the two jet blacks and my other two uh but this is uh these yeah, well hopefully you're gonna you're gonna play more hopefully you're gonna play more and wear them out and and then we'll replace them and yeah and that's true that, that, that way oh I'll, I'll play plenty <laughs> of golf so I, I don't worry about that I, I i get my golf in uh right. so um we're kind of starting to wrap up here. If, if there's anybody that has a uh, question or comment, throw it in the chat uh, as we kind of start to wrap up here. I know you've got a, a, a meeting to get to as well. So um, we did get one. I got a DM actually um, as we sort of, uh, you know, promoted this, if you will, ahead of time uh, on Twitter uh, from Jason. He's asking about wedge fitting, particularly the shaft. This is something we didn't talk about. Um, so it's kind of, it's kind of neat that Jason asked this, but he's asking about um, the, the shaft. He says, um, if I'm playing, uh, let's say, well, I'm, for his example, I'm going to say S300 dynamic gold um, in his in his irons. So S300 in his irons, should I also use the same shaft for wedges or should I do something different? Great question. Comes up all the time. Have that talk in the fitting process. So <clears throat> I'll answer Jason's question first and then kind of uh, I'll expand on that. So in his situation, if he's playing an S300 in his irons, um, probably going with, an S300 in his gap wedge, if he's using that primarily as, as kind of like a 10 iron, if you will, kind of an extension sure. of a pitching wedge and a, and a true gap wedge uh, is a good choice just to kind of marry that up with the irons. And then going with uh, like an S200, which is uh, like, for example, our wedge flex um, in the stock sh uh, shaft offering, um, just a little bit softer than the S2 from a subflex perspective, just give a little more feel, a little more spin green side would be a good choice probably in his sand and lob wedge. Okay. Interesting. So that's actually something I hadn't heard of is, well, I shouldn't say hadn't heard of, but something maybe you don't think of being that it's a heavier club typically is actually going softer flex wise in sort of your maybe higher lofted wedges. Um, is that, that's just, again, just kind of a feel thing for players. It, it is. That's exact uh, feel as well as spin. Think about it. If, if for the most part, like in a lob wedge, right, you're not swinging it full like you are at seven, 
not an iron, right? You shouldn't right. <laughs> You want to be a yeah. great wedge player. You're going to be more controlled and stuff like that. So a little softer is going to give you more feel in those kind of touchy feely shots, as we kind of say, um, as well as it's going to give just a little bit more spin and that slightly softer flex. Um, and that's just, you know, let's, let's go across the board, right? If, for example, a player comes to you guys and they get fit into whatever shaft, right? Nippon or yep. KBS or whatever the case may be. Um, kind of building off of that uh, in into their wedges is a good way to go. Um, you may get an extreme case where a player's in maybe a lighter weight graphite option. Um, jumping all the way up to the, the standard, you know, off the shelf wedge flex may be a little too heavy and stiff for them. So kind mm-hmm. of, again, marrying that up, don't be scared to say, okay, graphite's completely fine in, in those as well. Um, but yeah, I, I'm just a big fan of airing on the side of a little heavier and, and then a little softer in the wedges, especially on those green side clubs. Right. Yeah. Cause that's, there is a certain element of feel really. I mean, I guess in my sake, it's basically, you know, under 90 yards for some players, it might be under, you know, 60 yards, but where you're kind of, you know, you really need to feel where that club head is as you, as you swing in on those kind of lighter swings. So, uh, interesting. I had, I guess I, I, again, I'm not a train certified fitter per se, but, um, that is another one that I, I, I had thought of there. So. Um, let's see, here's, here's a question from Freddie in the chat. He's asking about, um, the, what is the actual, you know, he says practical, what is the practical difference, um, in the, the shafts that say the tour pros will use S 400 versus something that maybe most players will use an S 200, um, in the Vokey wedges. So between an S 200 and an S 400, it's just, for the most part, it's just gram weight. So three or four grams, I think, is, okay. is the exact weight difference there. S400 does have a tendency to play a little, because of that little more weight, a little bit more rigid, a little stiffer compared to the S200. But, uh, um, yeah, at the tour level, a lot of guys play that that shaft. Um, it just depends, right? It depends on what you fit into and, and stuff like that. So um, from that's, that's one of the heavier shaft options out there. So that's, you know, from there down is kind of um, – you know, the different options that are, that are offered, so to speak. So, right. um, yeah, it just depends again. It's so, it's so, it's so player. I, I can't stress enough. I'm sorry. It's not like a broken record, but getting oh, yeah. fit, um, yeah. it, it, this is all part of that process. And if you've, you know, I, I think statistically speaking around 80% of players are fit for irons and only maybe around 20%, I think it is, have been fit for wedges. So wow. use what you've kind of learned in the fitting process for the irons, and it can be applied somewhat towards the wedges with regards to, shafts shaft length uh lie angle is so very important in in wedges so all these things will kind of um come into play there so you can if you've been fit there you already have a, a slight advantage going into your wedges yeah no, that totally makes sense i actually have now i was gonna wrap up but actually just because of what you said i i, I there's a question i personally have that i came up with and then um we can kind of start to wrap here but um so you mentioned loft and lie and, and, and things like that when let's say a player gets their wedges and they have a, a gapping scenario where they might want to adjust the loft of their wedge. Um, you know, maybe they we need to go from 54 to 55 or whatever it might be. Right. I know that's something that you probably work with a lot, but is there a, a significant difference in say, if they adjust the lie or excuse me, they adjust the loft on the club that bounce changes, right. And lie changes. So is that something like, is, is that something they need to be concerned about if they do that? Um, or is it something that they won't see a ton of major you know, performance difference. Um, what's the, what's the process that you go through with players if they, you know, want to make that quick, that little tweak to their loft? That's a great question. Comes up all the time. Um, certainly we'll do kind of bend one degree strong or one degree weak, as we say, to yeah. get dialed in those distance numbers for sure. But yes, anytime you do that, it's a, it's a one-to-one ratio, right? So if you bend the club one degree strong, you're removing one degree of bounce. And in the fitting process, do that quite a bit. It, um to kind of get one degree doesn't sound like a lot but it can make a huge difference um especially green side and in the uh the bounce aspect so um that's why it's important to work with the you know with the, a fitter that kind of knows all that stuff because if anytime you just bend something you're, you're really changing the performance of that golf club more than you, you probably think yeah yeah exactly so i know that's it's a, something that i know like you you, you see you know I, you see the what's in the bag specs right of like players that either win or you know, go to, you know, you look at the Titleist Tour Players page and you see kind of what's in their bag. You see, you know, 55 degrees or you see, you know, a, a 50, 59 degree wedge or something. And you kind of, you think, well, oh, they're just playing a 60 degree bent. Well, 
There's a lot more changing maybe in that circumstance. Now we see these tour players might have it specifically built to 59 degrees, but um, like you said, there's a lot more that goes into it. So um, golfers, I, I, we're going to kind of start to wrap up here. I know John's got a meeting coming up here that um, we got to get him out the door for here. But um, again, a reminder today, uh, you can go in store at second swing, get your Vokey SM10 wedges. Um, or of course you can order online as well. We'll customize. And then you can also schedule your fitting uh, for Vokey SM10 wedges and we'll get your short game dialed in. Um, I can attest having played a few rounds a little bit earlier this year. Uh, they're, they're, they're pretty good. They're pretty darn good. And I also will endorse the nickel finish as we talked about earlier. So, uh, John, thank you again for your time today. Uh, this was great. I think the golfers learned a lot and it also will uh, stay up on YouTube as well for, for viewers to uh, chime in and, and watch as well. So, uh, thank you for, for doing this. And, um, again, we are really excited about SN10 this year and I know you are too. Thanks Drew. Appreciate you having me. Thanks for all that you guys do.